Higher consciousness and enlightenment is all about energy. It's not about much else. A lot of people think it is, but it's not. The energy you carry, you produce or you pick up from others, in a lot of ways dictates uh, how miserable you're going to be or how uh, unhappy you're going to be. In higher consciousness, your frequency is high. In enlightenment, your frequency is through the roof. In lower consciousness, your frequency is low and you suffer accordingly. It's all about energy. In Hinduism, they create the understanding of the three gunas, tamas, rajas and sattvic. It is all about becoming sattvic. People who are in tamas and rajas will never understand those who are in sattvic. It's not possible for them to understand. The consciousness levels are, are too different. In tamas and rajas, people live in their head, in dream, the matrix of their mind, believing it to be real. In sattvic, the mind is silent. And this is before awakening. And for a person to live in sattvic, they have to be open and vulnerable. And so they don't have the same defense systems that everybody else has against energy. Because they've gone against nature and removed all the obstacles that are in the way. They have embraced yin and they don't live from yang. Everybody in lower consciousness, everybody in tamas and rajas is living from yang. Yang energy, outgoing energy, constant resistance, which is constant suffering. If you have enough consciousness, you see it. If you don't have enough consciousness, you don't even realize it. In super consciousness, it's different again. You're not engaged in the mind anymore. You're living basically as space not as a thought pattern, not as an understanding, not as an identity, but simply space. And those who are in lower consciousness will never understand it. Those in higher consciousness will have uh, trouble understanding it also because in space there are no reference points. So there's nothing you can compare it with. That's not possible. In lower consciousness, it's a form of imprisonment in a kind of a self-made hell caused by your resistance to life. In higher consciousness, the hell's not such a hell because you're not resisting life anymore. You're still identified though. In super consciousness, you don't suffer. But it is hard to be in the material world because people are living in story you're living in ideas, understandings, belief systems, and you no longer live there. You are free. It's like you have to put a space suit on to even talk to people. And it's not understood. If you tune into the presence, you can find yourself as it. It's the fastest way to enlightenment. To stay tuned into the present, sis, the prince, presence, you have to remove all the obstacles that are in the way. In removing all the obstacles that are in the way, you prepare the mind for enlightenment. You stay tuned into the presence. I had this clear, clean understanding after being with Osho that the presence was everything. It was the doorway to higher consciousness. It was the doorway to super consciousness.
you tune into it and you stay tuned into it and you remove anything that's in the way of being tuned into it. It's up to you. You want to get free? Tune into the presence. It's what I did. It's what works. I removed all obstacles and tuned into the presence and used the presence as a doorway to my own true nature, which is not personal, it's just beingness. My interest in ga engaging the world is, is dying. I don't have an interest in language anymore because those of you who come into the presence here find that it expands your mind. My mind is being expanded beyond. It's becoming hard to be here. Holding a conversation with people is difficult now. 22 years awake. Tune in. It's the best opportunity you have. As far as I know, there's no other Buddha field in West Australia. Any questions, any statements, any challenges to this teaching tonight?